<sighs> so I was on the internet and I was watching videos of some of the problems you guys are having down south and frankly I'm mad. I'm not I'm pissed. You guys know I'm from Wisconsin. It would have literally taken me like a half an hour to put together a video of do's and don'ts in winter conditions. Now, I'm not saying you guys are stupid, because you're not. You're just playing with something you're not experienced with. <laughs> if I'm going to go down to a southern state, I'm going to look. I'm going to ask you guys, hey, what do I need to know when I'm going to be playing in like 130 degree weather? What should I be aware of? You guys literally should have asked me. You should have blown up my comment section. Hey, we have a winter storm vortex coming through and I don't know what to do. I would have put this video together and I could have saved a lot of people a lot of problems. So this video may be too late, but let's go over it. All right, so one of the main problems I was seeing on the social media videos is freezing pipes. So what do we do about freezing pipes? So I understand in the southern states, some of this stuff may not occur to you because of how things are different. Like in the southern states, water, that's something you guys treasure. Same with bikinis. In the colder states, there's a couple of tricks we know. So, if you're at risk of your pipes freezing, the main pipe going into the block isn't going to freeze because there's enough water going through it from houses consuming it, not a problem. What you got to worry about is the pipe going into your house or your house pipes themselves freezing. So how do we stop that? Go to the cold side of your sink and just crack it on. That amount right there is more than enough to keep the water moving so it doesn't have a chance to freeze and just leave it run like that until you get it above like 32 degrees. Yeah, I know you're probably like, oh my god, you're just wasting water. Well, would you rather have it trickle out like this or bust inside your wall and take out your wall and waste thousands of gallons? Trust me, this is a much better option and this will stop your pipes from freezing. Yeah, like... Wrapping your pipes in insulation in that, that's a waste of time. The cold eventually comes through anyway, because the insulation isn't giving off its own heat. The only way to stop your pipes, pipes from freezing is don't let the water stop moving, and they cannot freeze. Next one I'm seeing, black ice. Uh, so, they make black ice out to be a little bit more scary than it actually is. It's actually very visible, you just gotta know what to look for. One of the biggest keys that there is black ice is when you can see a taillight reflection in the road. Headlights you will always be able to see just because they're so bright, they're going to reflect off of stuff. Dimmer lights, like say taillights, if you can see somebody's taillights reflecting into the road, slow the hell down, that road has ice on it, more commonly known as black ice. The only time you'll see taillights is if there's standing water on the road or there's black ice. Watch for taillights. When you can see taillights in the road, okay, I need to slow down. There's ice on the road. My ability to stop is going to disappear. Proceed with caution. Next one, getting moving. All right, so when your car doesn't want to move, like you're going forward and all of a sudden your tires spin, that's bad. Rubber heats up really, really quick. What's going to happen is you're going to spin your tires, your tires are going to get warm, they're going to flash melt everything they touch, and then it's going to flash freeze, so your car will be parked on ice. So what do we do about this? If you try to get moving, and your tires spin, slam on the brakes immediately. Switch to reverse, and go back slowly, slowly ease into the throttle, go as far as you can until your tires spin, slam on the brakes. Wait for a second, put it back in drive, slowly give it throttle, and you'll eventually cut a path through the snow with your tires to where you can get moving and you'll get out. Do not continue to try to go forward. Once your tires spin, that's typically about as far as you're going to go. You have to switch directions. Don't cut the wheel back and forth. Just stay in a straight line. Build a path. As you keep working, you keep building a path. As long as you're patient, you will eventually get through. Even in like a two-wheel drive vehicle and like feet of snow. You just keep busting a path. Now if you go forward and your tires stop and you put it in reverse and they instantly start to spin even before you give it throttle, well you're gonna have to do some shoveling or you gotta throw down a traction aid. Kitty litter, sand, anything at all. 
Just something to go in between the ice that'll dig into the ice and your tires can grip on it and get you moving. But the mistake I was seeing is they'd go, all of a sudden their tires would start to spin and then they'd just drop the hammer and be like, boom. And they were done for. They weren't going anywhere after that. Uh, stopping. So, <laughs> don't try to stop. And also assume everybody's gonna pull out in front of you because of your reduced vehicle speed. They're going to assume they have more than enough time to pull out into traffic. So like if you see a car at the intersection, expect they're gonna pull out. Don't try to stop. Look for an exit strategy. If you try to stop, you're not going to. You're just gonna slam into that car. Never try to stop. Look at that car, like okay, if he pulls out, he'll probably make it to right here. So how do I go around him? Look for ways to go around and keep moving with very slow corrections. Never try to stop, because you can't. You're just gonna rear end that vehicle, T-bone it, or hit it however. Look for an exit strategy. Always be watching, where are my exit strategies? If something happens, what is the quickest way I can take to avoid an obstacle? Always be scanning, looking for exit strategies. Steering, steering your car. <laughs> All right, so in normal dry conditions, I'm gonna make some numbers up, but they'll be pretty close. If you're going around a corner, you can, depending on tire size, weight of the vehicle, tire, oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, tire type, weight of the vehicle, aerodynamics. When you're going around a corner, once you hit one G of gravity pushing out, because remember, you got the force accelerating you, then you have a force pushing to the outside of the circle. Once the force pushing to the outside of the circle hits 1G of gravity, you know, it will vary from car to car, tire to tire, etc. There will be enough force pushing out to where your car will not steer and you will slide off. While under ice icy conditions, it's much less. It's like maybe a tenth of a G. So what does that mean? When you're approaching a corner, what you're going to want to do is pretend there is a golf ball sitting on your dash. You're going to want to take that corner without that golf ball moving. If you're going fast enough where that golf ball would roll to the one side of your dash, your car is going to slide off the road. So, now a golf ball is pretty extreme because that takes a lot less, but if you imagine a golf ball, you'll definitely be driving slow enough. It would probably be something more like a pop can or something sitting on your dash. If the pop can were to roll, because of the g-force you're applying by trying to turn, your car is going to slide off the road. You do not have the traction abilities. So how much force would it take pushing on the side of your car to move it? And seriously, a very small number. Like maybe a tenth of a g, maybe a fifteenth of a g. It's just easiest. Think. If there's a golf ball on my dash, I need to take that corner. How slow do I have to go to keep that golf ball on my dash? If the golf ball is going to roll, I'm going too fast. Now, as you get better and more experienced, you can judge the corners, judge how actually slippery it is because ice period isn't slippery. There's different levels of slipperiness. But for now, because you're inexperienced, just imagine a golf ball on your dash, take the corner without the golf ball rolling and you'll be just fine. Now what I was saying like, so there's really cold ice, which is pretty slippery. Then there's warmer ice, which is starting to get a level of water on it. That's pretty slippery. It's getting even more slippery. Then you got different types of snow. There'll be the snow where it looks like there's busted glass in it because it's so cold that it's reflecting the light because it's got actual like really hard ice crystals in it. That's not quite as slippery as say like slush. What slush is is literally water. That's it's barely, barely frozen. So it's like driving across a big ass puddle. You're gonna hydroplane, so you gotta go slow. But like I said, there's, there's different levels of slipperiness depending on what is actually on the surface of the road. But for now, just pretend there's a golf ball on your dash. I do not want the golf ball to roll when I take this corner. If that golf ball is gonna roll, I'm gonna spin out of control. Next one, fishtailing. So I'd see them start to fishtail and then they just lose their shit. Bam, right into the ditch. Fishtailing is not a big deal. In winter states, you will fishtail like several times every single year. It's just the way it is. Depending on, you know, the quality of your tires, 
How slow your drive will dictate how bad the fishtail is, but no matter what, you're gonna get fishtail. If, whether that's just pulling out of a parking lot and get a little bit of slippage or something like that. So we actually have a lot of experience with fishtailing. So the first thing is, pretend your car doesn't exist. You're just driving the two steer tires. So when you drive, you want the two steer tires to always be pointed in the direction you're trying to get the car. Regardless of what's happening with the rest of the car, keep your steer tires pointed where you want to go. So if I want to go this way towards the camera and my car's like this, where do I want my steer tires? I want my steer tires pointed this way. As the car starts to correct, I keep my steer tires pointed at the camera. Another big problem where I was seeing, because yeah, there were some people that were getting the steer tires down, however they were screwing up on the throttle. When I start to fishtail, I don't want to dump the throttle, I don't want to let it completely go, otherwise I'm going to put a drag, especially if I have a rear wheel drive vehicle, I'll put a drag on the back end, which will make the fishtail even worse, or if I have a front wheel drive vehicle, now I'll put a drag on the front tires, which will make me do a 360. You just got to ease off of the throttle slowly, don't dump the throttle, definitely. If there's any one thing you definitely do not do, do not touch that brake pedal. No matter what, even if you're going to crash, don't touch that brake pedal. If you don't touch that brake pedal and you ease off the throttle, chances are you can regain control of your car and perform the maneuver you're trying to maneuver, you're trying to do. You hit that brake pedal, it's game over. No matter what, you guaranteed will crash. Never touch the brakes. Now, if you're real experienced, yeah, you can apply a parking brake. Like say you come up on a corner just too fast and you try slowing down, you're fishtailing through it. You can use the parking brake and then your front tires as a fulcrum point and work the car around the corner, but just forget about that. You don't have time for that. We're talking about normal. Okay, so I, my car's starting to slip. What the hell do I do? Ease off of the throttle and keep easing off until the car straightens itself. Once there's no load on the front or back tires, your car will straighten itself. Keep your tires pointed in the direction you want to go. No matter what the car is doing, keep your tires pointed that way. I find it easiest, like I'm coming up to a turn or something like that, I've let off, I started the fishtail, keep my eyes locked where I want to go and your steering wheel will automatically go into that direction. Don't stop staring at that point. I mean obviously you don't want to get tunnel vision, you need to know what's going on, but that's how I do it myself. That's what I've learned to do. It's also easy if you drive with one hand on the steering wheel so you can whip and do quick co corrections. It's not so bad now uh, with rack and pinion steering, but when I first started driving, we had link steering. So it would take like four or five revolutions of the steering wheel to totally cock your tires all the way. So I, as soon as I start sliding, one hand comes off the steering wheel, flat of the palm on the steering wheel, correct. And just keep your eyes locked on where you want to go and your brain will automatically, as long as it's not like your first day driving, will automatically know how many times you need to turn the steering wheel to have it turned so they're always pointed that way. Obviously there's a point of no return. <laughs> so if you did hit the brakes, let off the throttle, something like that too fast, once you get past to where your wheels can steer, you're screwed. Uh, take a deep breath. You're going to be looking at coming back around, so you have to anticipate that. So I've hit this point. Okay, now there's no choice. I cannot continue in that direction. My ass end is going to pass me. So as I get here, my tires were turning like that, and I need to spin the steering wheel back around this way to bring the front end. But you got to start correcting right away. So like you would think that once your tires get to right here, you'd want to start to correct to keep them pointed in the same direction. But it's before that because you have momentum on the front end. So it's going to come, it's something like right here. I mean, you really got to feel, feel out the car. But So then you're going to start correcting, and then hopefully you can catch it and get it to go back straight. So you can do like 360s and stuff and recover from it as long as you're quick about it. Obviously, the more time you spend out of control, the better you get at keeping it in control because there's like a line. You got the edge of control to out of control and then back to recovering control. I hope this video wasn't too confusing. I'm just trying to throw down some base principles. Somebody from the South could watch this video and gain enough knowledge to be able to push through this. Like, I'm in this situation, what do I do? Okay, I know what to do. Again, don't panic on anything. 
Even if you do crash your car, as long as you're an insured driver, you'll be fine. If you got your seatbelt on, unless you're doing like 300 miles per hour or you jump an overpass. Most of the time these crashes happen at low speed because everybody's driving slow because they know the weather's bad. So chances are if you crash, it's gonna be maybe like a $2,000 repair anyway. So you got insurance, you're good to go. Oh, that's about all I can think of right now that I could really help in a short amount of time. This was, video was actually supposed to be a lot shorter, but I was trying to help you understand the base principles of like how to like condition your mind to go through this. But anyway, appreciate you watching the channel. If you like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if I don't purchase what the link is for, and a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And right there is my very first mistake. It's not the action I wanted, but it's the action I can get. Oh, that's real good. My house had got broken into. It's not the action I wanted, but it's the action I can get. What a guy.